Module 2. Welcome to Module 2 of our course on stakeholder engagement. In this module, we want to go through some of the key elements that we have suggested are important to make sure the process is systematic and meaningful. The guidance note which IDB has recently published is based on 10 elements that should be present in a structured and meaningful consultation process. They include, first of all, identification of priority issues, where we ask, what are the likely risks and opportunities arising from the project? Followed by, number two, stakeholder analysis and consultation plan. Who is affected by the project and who may have an interest that can influence project outcomes? How, then, will the project engage with them? Element three covers prior information. How will the information be provided to stakeholders before the actual consultation events in a way that is meaningful to those involved? Element four discusses appropriate forums and methods for the consultation process. How should these be organized? Should they be public meetings? Should they be focus group meetings? Should they be discussions on a one-to-one -one basis? There are many different ways to do this and we will explore them in the course. Any project may have things that go wrong and where people feel that they have complaints. The project therefore needs to have a grievance redress mechanism where stakeholders can seek remedy if they feel the project is causing harm to them or to the environment. Once we've undertaken the consultation process, and remember this is an ongoing process, we need to make sure that the decisions of design and implementation aspects in the projects integrate stakeholder views and perspectives, and it needs to be built into the overall project management system. Element number seven is put in here to make sure that we provide feedback to stakeholders and that we also ensure transparency in the project decision making. How will the stakeholders be informed about project decisions and how their different views and inputs have been incorporated? We need to develop action plans for the project and those plans need to be based on proper data and embedded in the management system as we have mentioned before. This is element number eight. How will the project establish and maintain a suitable and adaptive management system to continue to address environmental and social issues? Element number nine covers documentation and public disclosure. The process needs to be documented well, and many of the studies and documents need to be disclosed to the public. And finally, this goes beyond project planning and project approval. Element number 10 covers ongoing stakeholder consultation during project implementation. What are the mechanisms established to ensure that stakeholders are kept informed and involved throughout the project? It is important to realize that these different elements are not sequential. They do not happen one after the other. They may be happening at different times, they may be happening in parallel, and they may be happening intermittently. Finally, stakeholder analysis and consultation plan. A key element in the process is to identify who the stakeholders are. Stakeholders are individuals or groups who are either affected by a project or who can influence project outcomes, positively or negatively, depending on how they feel about the project. These are the groups we should consult with once we've identified the issues that concern them. To illustrate this, we have a small slide here called Interests and Influence Analysis. If you imagine a project that involves a land reform, you can plot the different stakeholder groups on a chart with the vertical axis indicating how much influence the different groups have, and the horizontal axis showing whether they have a positive interest, if they like the idea of a land reform, or a negative interest. And you can see right away that we have a problem here with A, the big landowners. Such a project might affect them very negatively, but they're also very influential people and may pose a threat to successful project outcomes. Landless laborers are in the opposite quadrant. They would have a very positive interest in the land reform, but they don't have much voice or influence. And part of the project design involves engaging with them, consulting with them, and also giving voice to their concerns in the project planning and design. 